Welcome back to the channel, you guys. I hope you're having an awesome day today. For this week's video, we've got ourselves a $100 guitar I ordered off eBay. Let's open it up, take a look inside, and see what a hundred bucks gets you. Now, when I was first learning to play, you could not get an instrument for a hundred bucks. It just wasn't possible. You had to spend like three to five hundred bucks to get like a good entry level. And there was really no mid-range instruments available. You had to buy something super expensive or pretty crappy. Thankfully, times have changed. So what we're going to do is see what a hundred bucks gets you. I haven't opened it up. I haven't looked at it. I haven't set it up. Nothing. What we're going to do is just open this thing up cold turkey and see what you get for a hundred bucks. All right, so here's what I ordered. This is the Indio Electric Guitars, and it's also labeled Mono Price. And I only know them from like cheap cables and stuff, but maybe they're making guitars now. I don't know. I haven't read a single review on this. I know nothing about this guitar. I just ordered it totally cold turkey just to find out what a hundred bucks gets you. So anyway, uh, let's open it up. I do know that it should be a blue Strat style guitar. That's all I know. So let's get the knife and open it up. Okay, let's open it up. Oh man. Okay, I was not expecting a gig bag at all. Well, that's pretty sweet. Okay, let's take a look, closer look at that. All right, there was a little card in the bottom of the box and this is indeed made by Monoprice because that's their support and tech numbers and they want you to leave a review and such. So anyway, we don't need that. So gig bag, here we go. It actually feels decently padded too. Like some of the ones from Fender are worse than this. Okay, so you got backpack straps, no surprises there. A little carry handle here, front pocket. Looks like the zipper is already split. No, it's not, okay. No, it's okay. All right, nothing in the big pocket. Zipper does feel cheap, no surprises. It's a $100 guitar. So anyway, let's open it up and check it out. It smells weird. Okay, ah, here we go. Okay. In the gig bag. In the foam sleeve, here we go. We'll just take the, oh. Okay, comes with two Allen keys for adjustment. Perfect. And then just elastic on the top here. Sort of see a little bit of the blue through the, the foam. So we got the right color, thankfully. <laughs> Made in China, okay, awesome. Like I said, I know nothing about this guitar at all. I haven't done any research on it or anything. I just like, let's find a hundred dollar guitar and see what we got. So I know nothing, absolutely nothing about it. Cool. So we get a <laughs> little blue burst finish. That's not too shabby. We'll take a closer look at it, obviously. I actually like the color, which is pretty cool. And then we've got some cardboard to protect the fingerboard, I assume, just underneath the strings, the silicone patch. Oh, and a foam selector, or like a little foam block over the selector. Cool. Five-way switch, volume, tone, tone, pretty much a straight Stratocaster copy. Let's, uh, I'm gonna take the plastic off and everything and take a closer look. Now this is my favorite part of getting any new instrument. Here we go. Oh yeah. So everything's just a little dirty and dusty and we need to wipe it down, but let's take a closer look at some of the parts. So the neck itself is a really nice satin finish. So no high gloss here, nothing to stick on. So that's a pleasant surprise. And as you can see, the grain is really nice too. I'll try to keep that in focus, but yeah, I'll bring it in a little bit. Look at the grain on that, really nice grain. So, pleasantly surprised at that. Beautiful, beautiful satin neck. So, hey, so far, thumbs up. So here's a look at the front profile of the headstock. Obviously, it's got that really interesting hook right here. I think that might be a project for, uh, you know, the jigsaw, maybe uh, <laughs> reprofile that or something. But anyway, uh, that's the look, uh, obviously, to avoid copy infringement. So uh, you get the Indio classic branding, uh, two string trees, just like a squire. So, you know, this would be similar 
at least in my mind to a, uh, like a Squire Bullet or Affinity, but we'll plug it in, check out all the electronics, all that stuff as well. So there you go, there's a front uh, look at the front, let's check out the back. And here's the back side of the headstock, obviously unbranded tuners for a hundred bucks, you're not gonna get name brand tuners, but we'll see how they hold tune. Now on the front side, the neck is a maple fingerboard with classic black dot inlays. I think it looks really nice. Um, I'll try to get a close up shot here for you guys. I just need to move some stuff over. So yeah, the fingerboard is just about as beautiful as the back of the neck. I'll try to see if uh, we can get some of the wood grain there. Hopefully you guys can see that. But anyway, yeah, it's a really nice piece of wood for the neck. So. You know, color me surprised for that. I was not expecting that for a hundred bucks. Now, before we continue the tour of the guitar, as I was looking at the bridge, I'm like, oh, hey, where's the whammy bar? So it's not in the cardboard box. It's not in the gig bag. So they forgot to include the whammy bar. Now I do have a couple Squire ones kicking around. So I'm gonna see if one of these fit. Now I have a creeping suspicion that problems like this are somewhat common on guitars of this price range. Okay, not that one, not that one. Let's try the bigger size here looks more likely but yeah there we go so uh square bar fits no problem probably made at the same plant okay cool well there you go problem solved but if you don't have uh whammy bars lying around eh, i could see that being a little annoying now as you guys can see we've got a vintage six screw trim system very common on these lower end guitars and a little bit of binding there. I think I'm gonna have to back the screws off a little bit. So I think we're gonna take it apart and just see if we can get this thing working well. While we're down here, let's check out the neck. Let's see how straight this thing is or if we need to make some adjustments. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so, wow. That's dead straight. I was not expecting that, sorry. <laughs> have to look at this without the camera but anyway uh yeah dead straight so normally if you needed to uh tighten up the truss rod there'd be an excess of relief in the middle of the neck and as you guys can see here this is the middle of the neck it is straight all the way through so i wasn't expecting that so as you guys can see the straight edge is touching the fingerboard all the way along so we don't need to make any adjustments at all to the truss rod all right let's pop the back cover off the trim system here See what we got inside. Now I really like the blue finish on this guitar, but what are we going to find when we remove this cover? Is it going to be plywood? Is it going to be press board? What do we got? Well, I'm not sure because it's all painted. <laughs> anyway, let's check it out. Okay, so the parts definitely look, you know, kind of tinny and kind of cheap, which is unsurprising. So the claw right here, you can tell just very very thin kind of coated metal doesn't look great um, and of course the block looks absolutely terrible <laughs> so unsurprising now it might function totally fine we'll see but it definitely has that like ultra cheap crappy metal you know just quickly thrown in a mold and away you go so <clears throat> excuse me so anyway this looks uh, super duper cheap on the inside let's keep looking at the guitar all right, you guys, let's take a quick look under the pick guard. Let's find out what kind of pickups are in here. I'm assuming they're kind of like that Squire uh, cheap ceramic pickups. Now we don't need to pull all the knobs off unless we were gonna swap out the electronics, but let's do it anyway. And the knobs feel just fine. Cheap plastic, but you know what? Even the most expensive strats have cheap plastic knobs, so nothing too crazy. Now these look like they have indexing holes right here. There's like a hole in the pick guard with like a little metal tab. I'm assuming that's to keep the pot from spinning. I don't know. Anyway, let's pull it apart and find out. Now, because the ground wire is so tight from the volume pot to the back of the trim, I can't actually pull the pick guard all the way out, which sucks if you wanted to like swap parts, you'd have to cut and re-solder. But anyway, um, yeah, my assumption was right. These are ceramic magnet pickups, just like you would find in an entry level Squire. So there you go. I'll try to get a shot of the pots. So here's a peek at the rest of the electronics. So of course you've got the small dime sized pots in there. Hopefully you guys can see that and cheap electronics. So no surprises there. Uh, the pots are unbranded. So not, you know, not alpha pots or anything like that. So bottom of the line, but does it matter? I don't know. We'll plug it in and find out. Now, just for curiosity's sake, here is an official Fender 
pickguard. This one is the V-Mod pickups I used um, in our noiseless versus single coil uh, shootout a while ago. So anyway, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, that looks like an exact clone. So if a person did want to, you know, replace some parts on this guitar, looks like the Fender ones will match right up. So good to know, I suppose. So what I'm going to do in anticipation of trying to make this trim work, I'm going to back off all of these trim screws just by like, I don't know, just so they're up like a mill. Now on guitars like this, you need to be very careful because screws and parts like this are likely to strip. So make sure you get the right bit size for the screw and you keep appropriate downward pressure. Okay. So you want to just try to minimize any chance of stripping. So I'm just going to back them all up. Um, because I could feel and sense some binding in there. So, okay, so a little bit better. Just a couple more. I think I need to just back out a bit. And of course, we'll add some lubrication on them and stuff like that. So, okay, that feels a little bit better. All right. Now, the last thing I really want to check out is the fingerboard radius. Now, I haven't played a single note on this guitar yet, but it strikes me as being flatter than your traditional Stratocaster. So here's my radius gauge. It's 9.5. I'll just see if I can slip it in here. There we go. Oh, well, maybe not. There might be a slight bit of space there. Try up by 12th fret here. Let's see if I'm going to get that under the strings. Oh yeah, definitely not. Okay. So it's, it's flatter than 9.5 up there. You could really see, uh, what should we go with? Let's try 12, which would be like, you know, your typical Les Paul. So for some reason down here, the nine and a half looked a little bit, oh no, that's much better. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oops. Sorry. I'll see if I can bring it up. I don't know if that'll show up, but anyway, that that's much tighter. So I think we, what we have here is a 12 inch radius. I went online to try some, to try to find some specs on this guitar and I couldn't find any. So <laughs> anyway, so what you can expect out of this guitar, should you, you know, want to purchase as a backup guitar or as a first guitar or as just a fun take around guitar or whatever, 12 inch radius seems to be about right. So there you go. Now, right here is where most tuning issues happen on inexpensive instruments. So this plastic nut here probably will be like, you know, grabbing the string as I use the trim and won't allow the system to come back into tune. So anyway, it's pretty rough. So I think uh, in a future video, I'll probably polish it up. But what you can do right now is just take a mechanical pencil, pencil in some uh, graphite. I'll clean that up after here. So just pop the string out of the nut slot pencil and some graphite. This is the, the cheapest way to do it. And really, I shouldn't say it's only on cheap guitars. I've seen some Gibsons that are like brutal. That should not happen. But anyway, it's kind of one of those uh, final setup uh, procedures that not all manufacturers do equally. So on a guitar like this, you can expect this to be very bad. So I'll probably uh, in the future video, maybe just show you guys how I'll polish that up and clean it up. But for now, that's all we're going to do. Now, the other thing I'll quickly mention is here because there's no skunk stripe on the back of the neck, you can actually see the two pieces of maple. So this is your fingerboard maple. This is your neck maple. And this, there's nothing weird or wrong about this process at all. It's totally fine. Um, tons of manufacturers do that. Um, but here you can really see the difference of color in the maple. So other than that, there you go. Um, frets overall, you know, seem actually okay. Like they seem polished up decently and I don't know. Uh, once I start playing on it, I'll be able to give you guys some better feedback, but they're relatively small frets, uh, small skinny frets. So anyway, uh, but overall they seem, you know, decently well-made and, and polished. Now on a cheap guitar like this, they likely will wear out quite quickly. So, you know, this is not the kind of guitar that somebody's going to pick up and play like, you know, four hours every day. You will wear the frets out right away. But I think as a first instrument or as a backup, you know, certainly better than anything I ever had growing up. All right. So overall, the fit and finish of this guitar is okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, obviously, the plastics are all cheap and kind of roughly cut. Uh, the trim system seems really cheap. But again, we're going to test that out. 
Uh, electronics, very low end. And I should mention that I forgot to mention when I pulled it all apart there, um, no shielding on the back of the pickguard, no shielding on the inside of the cavity. So you could be dealing with some excess noise. Uh, I have shielding paint here from you know other projects that I've done. So uh, that could be something, you know, a little bit of an upgrade. And I think I have some, uh, some shielding tape that's like self-adhesive, so you can just cut it out. So anyway, we could shield this a little bit better than it is. So it could be noisy. Now I have no idea if, you know, your five-way switch is hum canceling in position two and four. I'm hoping it's like a strat and it will be. So at least, you know, you have those two positions. Uh, body, unknown wood species, and I couldn't find specs online. It's light, it's fine. The contours are really nice, like the tummy cut and uh, the forearm contour. Everything seems okay. Um, I will say, it seems like maybe they spent a little bit more of their money on the neck, and I'm totally fine with that. The satin finish neck, uh, beautiful profile, nice carve up here by the nut. Um, yeah, everything looks great about it. Uh, nice piece of wood, as I previously mentioned. Uh, frets seem good too. Um, one huge surprise on this guitar is the fretboard ends are like super rolled, like really nice. You know, uh, in previous videos, I've talked about rolling the, the fretboard ends because you know most manufacturers don't roll them enough for what I like. Um, and this totally is. I won't roll this anymore. So huge surprise on the neck. Uh, it feels super comfortable. Now the fret ends themselves as I run, run my thumb up and down, not too bad. Nothing's cutting me, nothing's poking me. I think a, a polish with uh, you know some super duper uh, uh, light steel wool or sandpaper or something like that, just to polish up the ends. Uh, might do some good, but I've had worse on, you know, big brand name guitars. So anyway, uh, neck gets a huge thumbs up from me. Um, so anyway, let's tune it up, plug it in. Let's uh, continue the review. All right, you guys, so I'm plugged in with my Line 6 Helix so that I can talk and play at the same time. I do not have an isolation booth for my amp because I'm not fancy like that. So here we go. <laughs> It just so it just worked out that this trim is slightly floating just from bringing the the strings up to tension kind of like scared to use it but anyway so volume works that's good works that's good now is this tone for the bridge pickup it is not okay so middle pickup yeah okay so the bottom tone controls for the middle pickup not my fave but that's okay probably needs to be intonated I haven't done any of that so uh, Let's go to... Ah, it is hum cancelling in the middle. Okay, so position four is definitely hum cancelling. So that's good to know. I sound a little out of tune already. Let's just do that. Now the tuning machines, uh, let me grab my tuner. Uh, the tuning machines feel not very good. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, similar to like a bullet. Oh, those ones are okay. There we go, good old third string. and first string is way out. So while I have the tuner on here, let's test out the whammy a bit. So I can still feel it grabbing a little weird once I get like right to the pick guard. There's still a little, I don't know, something's catching. I'll have to uh, check that out. That's surprisingly not way out of tune. Yeah, 
crazy. That's really surprising considering uh, <laughs> how bad that nut looks. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm impressed with the tuning stability actually. So, you know, as a new player or as a backup guitar, hey, you know, <laughs> that's a big thumbs up. There we go, I'm just gonna cut that off for now. Yeah, so anyway, overall first impressions, uh, pretty amazing for a hundred bucks. Now just for fun, let's do a quick one minute jam with our very expensive Select Strat here versus the old $100 Indio Classic. Here we go. So here are my final thoughts on the Indio Classic. Well, first of all, I gotta say it's a heck of a guitar for a hundred bucks. You get tons of guitar. Um, there's certainly some pluses and minuses, which we will go through, but overall I would say this is a really cool guitar. I mean, gig bag included, everything for a hundred bucks, much better than any hundred dollar guitar I ever played, you know, when I was learning. So I would say, um, perfect for a beginner or a backup guitar, or if you don't have a Strat style guitar in your collection, there you go, 100 bucks, boom. Now, I can't vouch for the quality control. My guitar was pretty good overall, but I would say, you know, someone else's might not be, and that's, I think, the nature of the game. And obviously, I was missing the whammy bar out of mine, so, hey, I don't know. Maybe they're not, maybe they're not sold with whammy bar, but they should be if they have a trim system, so I think it was just missing. Uh, let's go through the minuses first, and then we'll talk about uh, the positives. I would say some minuses are uh, the trem system. Certainly the block is just absolutely astonishingly bad. Um, kind of looks like it could crack on you in any moment. I don't know if it will or not, but definitely, you know, they didn't spend a lot of money back there. Uh, the body is great. L like I said before, light, and I lo love the color, the little blue burst. Um, that's really great. Uh, what else is bad? I guess the shielding could have definitely been <laughs> a little bit better. I think this will be a, a pretty noisy guitar. Pickups sound great to me, but I mean, I like the, you know, the ceramic pickups have never ever bothered me. You could, there's good tones to be had for sure. So no problems there. And although the pots are small, unbranded dime sized pots, they all seem to work, be working fine, uh, at least for now. Uh, what else other negatives? Uh, tuning machines, they're bad. They're pretty bad. They're like Squire Bullet bad. Um, some of them seem to work fine. Other ones are stiff. Um, you know, you'll turn them a bit and nothing will happen. And then, you know, they'll go too far. So definitely a weak spot uh, on the tuning machines. Now positives is huge positive for the neck. Massive thumbs up from me. Those rolled fingerboard edges on both sides just make this neck super comfy and fretwork that doesn't suck, which you know, is surprising for a hundred dollar guitar. That's great. You get 22 frets, which is nice. And other than that, I mean, it balances well, it plays well. I don't know what else to say. It feels great in the hand. Um, for me, I think it was a good choice on them to spend most of their money on the neck. <laughs> maybe they had it, you know, maybe someone else was making their necks for them. But anyway, they did a good job. Um, and in terms of aesthetics, not a huge fan of the hook. 
And of course it says Indio Classic, like it's a, a well-known classic brand. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyway, uh, overall I would say this is a great, great investment and I wouldn't hesitate to buy it again. Now this guitar could certainly benefit from a proper setup, but considering I just unboxed it, tore it all apart to see what it was like, and then put it back together and played it, I was pretty impressed. I didn't adjust anything on this guitar and, you know, the bends weren't choking out and there was no fret buzz, um, you know, as I moved around the neck. So that shows that there's no high or low frets. So overall, you know, the playing experience is, is pretty good. So there you guys go. Proof that a hundred bucks gets you a decent playable guitar. And I think the fact that Squire and Strat parts are almost a guarantee to bolt right up onto this thing uh, means that if something goes wrong, you know, there's tons of parts available to fix it. So let me know what you guys would like to see me do to the old Indio Classic. Maybe we could do some mods to it or maybe a setup series, how to get like, you know, a good setup on a low end guitar or something like that, or maybe put expensive parts on a cheap guitar. I don't know. Anyway, if you guys have any ideas, I'm totally open to it. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking right here. The rest of my information will be on the screen or in the video description below. Have an awesome week. Take care.